Hey, Algebra students, I want to look at a concept that comes up a lot on the GED test. Two little tricks you can do in order to tackle these without a whole lot of understanding of the topic, and then we will do it in depth the way you're supposed to be able to do it for uh, college. So we're going to look at all three things. Let's get started. So directions say you may use a calculator and the GED formula sheet for any of the following. And if you have this on the test, you will absolutely have those two tools. Now look at the first one. Which of the following are solutions to the equation 3x squared minus 14x equals five? Now we've learned a lot about solutions, about solving equations, and we have a lot of skills and we have a lot of tricks. But I have two things that I want to point out to you that would tell you that this is a slightly different problem, a slightly different equation than the ones we've been solving. So the first thing I notice here in this equation is that we don't just have an x. We also have an x squared term. When you have an x squared term, and that's the biggest exponent we have later in college, you'll learn about bigger than x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth maybe. But when you have just an x squared term, we call that a quadratic equation. And that's not the only clue here that I'm looking at a quadratic equation. I like as many clues as possible because I know a lot of us get mixed up on the test. Like, when do I use what? But here's another clue. The fact that all of these have two solutions. See the commas? Quadratic equations, when they have the power of two, generally have two solutions. They have up to two. Sometimes occasionally they have one. And as you'll see in college, as that exponent goes up, you can have more and more possible solutions. So two big clues that this is a quadratic. And you are supposed to know that with a quadratic equation, our regular practices to get X alone, to get the letter alone, aren't enough. You need more tools. You'll learn a few of them in college. There's more than one way to tackle a quadratic equation. But that being said, for this problem, I don't even need the quadratic tools for a reason. I have possible solutions. Do you see those possible solutions? Negative one third, negative five, one third. Even if I forgot everything I ever knew about solving equations, I know how to test solutions. And so that's the first trick I'm gonna show you. Just working backwards when you get stuck on the test, guessing and checking. So looking at A, a says there's two solutions to this equation, negative one third and negative five. Let's look at our calculator to see if I plugged those things in for X, would it make my equation true? And I'm gonna do it in my calculator by storing a value for the variable. It's just like what we did when we evaluated expressions. But to test that, I am gonna put in the value first. So I'll do it one at a time. So let's do negative one third. And then I'm going to use the store function. Remember we could do that? Let's store that as X and then see what happens. So remember after you press store and the letter, you press enter to store it. And now I'm going to type one of the expressions. Now you don't have an equal sign in your calculator. Okay. So this is all I can do. I'm going to put X in for that left-hand side and see if it equals the right-hand side. Let's do it. So we're going to type three X squared minus 14 X. And we are going to evaluate the expression on the left-hand side and look at what it comes to. When I plugged in negative one third, it did come to five. And so I can see that both C and A have a negative one third. So that's promising. But like we said, there's two answers here. So let's try the next one. Let's try if we took negative five, stored that as X. Press enter to tell your calculator to store. Now try typing it. Now it's fun because we can actually arrow up, grab this expression again by pressing enter, and now it will plug in the new value. Look what it gave me when I plugged in negative five. It gave me 145. This is not true now. 145 is definitely not equal to five. So any one of these multiple choice that has a negative five in it, well, it's going to be wrong. 
So let's look at C. You see that has an answer of negative one third. The other number is five. Let's try it with five. So I'll take the value five. I'll store it as X, press enter to tell my calculator to do that. And then I'll go up again and grab the expression, enter, press enter again, and look, that one does give you five. So five is a correct answer. Now you might say, well, Kate, this one has a five too. So shouldn't I check that one? Sure, that five works. Does the one third work? So let's try one third, store that as X, enter, and let's go grab R original expression. And no, it does not give us five. It gives us negative 13 thirds. So this one wouldn't work either. So look at that. We did find that the correct answer here then is C. Okay. So even if you forget every way <laughs> to solve quadratic equations, factoring, quadratic formula, there's another one in college completing the square, you forget every method, you can still guess and check, guess and check, right? We know how to test if something's a solution. But now, so these ones are ugly, they would be more challenging to guess and check. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to bust out that quadratic formula. And that's why we need our formula sheet. So here is the GED formula sheet. As I always say, the first half is geometry, that measurement geometry. But underneath that, we have some algebra formulas. And you are going to see one of them is the quadratic formula. And as I always say, mark up your formula sheet because you need to understand something about the quadratic formula. Okay, so this is what we use when we have quadratic equations, we have squares. And they talk about the standard form of a quadratic equation. And again, this is let this kind of just roll over you because you don't need this vocabulary for the GED. But what you do need to understand are what A, B, and C are. Because if you look at the formula, it says to find X, you have to plug in some B's, some A's, and some C's. So you better know what the A, the B, and the C stand for, okay? So A is the number with X squared. B, and I'm going to do it with the sign, is the number with the plain old X. And C is the constant, as we call it, the number that's by itself, if and only if your equation is set equal to zero. So the whole thing has to be equal to zero for this sucker to work. And then this formula, it's ugly. So if you were on the test, like you literally need to look right there at the formula sheet and copy it down letter by letter onto your paper if you're going to use it. <laughs> okay. So I will do that. I actually have it memorized as you will probably have to do for college. Now, if you do have to memorize it for your college classes, go Google the song that they have about it to Pop Goes the Weasel. I'm going to butcher it right now because I am not a singer, you guys. But X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root. Watch how long your square root is of B squared minus 4AC all over, all over, you guys, extended under the minus B. 2a. So that's the quadratic formula. And you can see why I say it's slow to work. It's kind of a complicated looking thing, but you don't need a lot of algebra skills besides evaluating expressions in order to be able to use that. So even though it's a complicated example of evaluating expressions, that's really all I'm doing because X is already by itself. I don't have to solve this and I can know what A and B and C are if my equation is equal to zero. So look here, this equation is set equal to zero. And so I can look at what A, B, and C are. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you first how to partially use the calculator. So then my first step is gonna to be to do the substitution myself. Every time I see an A, I'm gonna plug in that A value of two. Every time I see a B, I'm gonna plug in that B value of four. And every time I see a C, I'm going to plug in that C value, keep the sign of negative five. Let's do it. X is equal to negative B and our B is four plus or minus. And don't forget about a plus or minus. It just means there's two answers. Remember how we said there's usually two answers. There's an answer that you'll get if you take this expression and add. And there's an answer that you'll get if you take this expression and 
subtract. It's just that this thing is so nasty, no mathematician wants to write it twice. So that's why we're keeping that plus or minus sign around. So the square root, make sure it's nice and long. Everything that's under that square root needs to stay under that square root of b squared. Now it's a really good habit when you're plugging a number into exponential expressions to use parentheses. So parentheses around the number, exponent on the outside. It actually won't make a difference in this problem, but it will if your b is negative. And so let's just develop that good habit from the start. Minus four, and those things are all shoved together there, so they're multiplying. So we'll put a in a parentheses and c in a parentheses. And we said our a was two and our c was negative five. And now that whole thing stretch all the way under the expression is going to be over two times a and our a is two. Now, I want you to look at something about all your answers. With all the answers here, you have something on the left of the plus minus sign, something on the right of the plus minus sign, and something on the bottom. So that's what I was saying. We can partially do it in our calculator since this is kind of some challenging math. So I can see right now that on the left-hand side of my plus minus sign, I only have that single number. So I'll just leave that be negative four plus or minus. Now, if you look at all your answers, I just have one thing on the side of the plus minus. And so I'm going to take this entire expression and simplify it using my calculator to find out what that one thing would be. So to get a square root, square roots are green, so I need to hit the green second button. The square root will put in exactly the way we see it. So parentheses for close parentheses square minus, careful that's not a negative, it's a minus, four times two, close the parentheses on that two, times negative five, close parentheses. And now I'm going to simplify that chunk, that blue chunk of my expression. Enter, and I get something interesting, 2 square root of 14. And you might say, shouldn't I get a decimal? And when we talked about square roots, we said sometimes there's a time for an exact number. So we'll leave it in square root form. And sometimes we use decimal approximations. Now, with quadratic equations, we generally leave it like this in the exact form. So I don't want a decimal. So leave it like that, even if it looks ugly to you. And you can see that in your answers, there's still a square root of 14 in every one of them. So they left it in exact form. So you better leave it in exact form. Don't use the quick convert button to get a decimal. We don't want it. Now, how about the bottom? We can see on the bottom of the fraction, that's math we can simplify as well. You can do it in your calculator if you need to, but I'm pretty good at two times two, that's four. Okay, now, if you just look at this answer, it kind of looks similar to what you have here, but notice that there's something really interesting going on. None of these answers actually have a start of negative four. And you might say to yourself, did I do this wrong? No, you didn't. Remember that with fractions, you can pull out common factors. And this is one of the reasons I have this example for the advanced level students, because most of my beginners, even experienced level students, they get real intimidated by fractions, but we're advanced. We can finally tackle these fractions without crying, curling up in the fetal position. I don't know, calling our mommy for a hug. We can do this, you guys. So this is what I want you to notice. There are three things here we need to look at. We need to look at this, those same things. The number that's before the plus minus, the number that's after the plus minus, and then the number on the bottom four. Do you notice how all three of those things have an even whole number? So the number out front of two square root of 14, the two, then the negative four and the four, they're all even, which means they all have a two within them. Even in ugly fractions like this, if you have a common factor that's in every number, it can't just be in one of the top numbers, it has to be in both, you can divide it out. And so I can divide that two out of all three numbers. And that's what I'm gonna do. If I divide the two out of negative four, I'll be left with negative two. I'm still gonna have my plus minus sign. Now, if I divide by two here, I won't have two square roots of 14 anymore. I'll just have a single solitary square root of 14. And again, I could pull the two out of there because it was a whole number two. If the two was inside the square root symbol, I could not do the same thing, okay? And then down on the bottom, I can divide up the two as well, okay? And four divided by two is, of course, two. And so I do see this answer in my solutions. Negative two plus or minus the square root of 14 over two, B is the correct answer.
So now you might say to me, Kate, that was really hard. I don't know a lot about fractions. Can you give me a different method? I'm going to give you two different methods. Okay. If that one made sense to you though, you think you can duplicate it, turn off the video. You're good to go. <laughs> but for the rest of us, let's look at how we can continue to use this calculator uh, to help us out. So I think the first thing I'll do is test the solutions like I did for the first example. You said, Kate, that I thought that'd be ugly. Yeah, it, it's a little ugly, but we can still do it, okay? So A says, I think that this whole thing is X. So we can type that in our calculator, okay? So I want a whole big ugly fraction. So I'm gonna start with N over D and then I'm gonna type negative two. Now here's one thing your calculator doesn't have. It's that plus minus. So you have to test one at a time. Just like over here, we tested one number at a time. Here, even though it looks like one solution, it's actually two solutions. So we test one at a time. So I'll try the plus one. The square root of 14, arrow down over four, arrow out of the fraction and store it as X. And now we can put that in for this left-hand side of the expression, just like we did with the last one and see if it really does give us zero. Let's do that. So two X squared plus four X minus five. Okay, we can see that definitely did not give us zero, but let's look at B, which we already know is the correct answer. Let's imagine if we stored B as the X value. So B says negative two plus, and again, it's plus or minus, but I can only test one at a time. So negative two plus the square root of 14 all over two. And this time that's what we're gonna store as X. Press enter to tell your calculator to do that. And then let's go ahead and grab that same expression from before, 2x squared plus 4x equals 5, and press enter. And look, it does give me zero. So you can even test these ugly solutions using the store function in your GED calculator. You can also plug in the A, B, and C to use the quadratic equation. So great way. So I'm just going to say we can test the solutions using the store function. That's our guess and check method. I love guessing and checking because, you know, you get really panicked on the test and sometimes you'll forget what methods to use when. Well, guessing, guessing one of the answers and checking them is a, a test taking strategy that you can use in a billion different test situations. Um, it's good on the GED math test. It's good in a lot of places. But let's say you did remember that this is a quadratic equation. You did remember that you could use that quadratic formula, which again is on the formula sheet, but it says X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC. Told you guys I can't say all over two A. You could put the values of A, B, and C in and then use the formula. Let me show you what I mean. So we said A was the number with the X squared. So two, we're gonna store that as A. Keep clicking and you get different letters, enter. And now we said we'll take four and we're gonna store that one as B, enter. We'll do negative five and store that as C, enter. And now you can just type the quadratic formula. So let's start with our fraction bar since this whole expression is over a fraction bar. And we said X is equal to negative B plus or minus, but we can only do one at a time. So we'll start with plus the square root of B squared minus, use the minus, not the negative, four A. And then I have to press arrow to be able to type two letters in a row. So A C all over two A. And now I'm gonna press enter. I stored those values. Now you might say, hey, Kate, that doesn't look like the solution we looked at. And that's what I'm talking about, that the computer flips the order and does the square root first. But take a look at B, which we know is the right answer. And notice that it has a negative two and I have a minus two, same difference, right? We're going down two. And then it has a plus or minus a 14. And indeed here I have this 14, I have the positive version of the 14 and it's all over two. And if I were to do the minus version, you would see I would get the one where it was subtracting the square root of 14. Again, let's arrow up here. 
I'm going to press enter to select it, but this time I'm going to turn the plus into a minus because we said it's plus or minus. That's what that symbol means. And take a look when I enter it this time. This time I still get that negative two, that minus two, but this time it's minus the square root of 14 or another way to think of that is subtracting the square root of 14. Wow, that's a lot of information. Good news is you can just pick your favorite method. Like you don't have to know all three ways. Whichever way you think is the simplest, use that. But for sure, they, they all rely on being decent with this TI calculator. I'll just sum up. Here are our choices. We can guess and check with that store function. We can use the quadratic formula and do the substitution ourselves. And that's when we, the first way we did it where we needed to know about fractions. Or we can use the quadratic formula with the store function in your calculator, but beware that the answer is going to look a little different than the way we usually write things. I don't know why they program the calculator to work that way when it's always written in the other order in your math classes. But either way, don't care which way you do it. Pick a method that works for you. All that being said, if you never learn to do quadratic formulas and you stay stumped on them, you can still pass your GED math test with a very high score. In fact, I very rarely taught this in my classes because it was so intimidating to most students. It's And you can just guess on the one or two times it'll come up on your test. However, it's nice to know. And when you go to college algebra, you absolutely hands down have to know how to deal with quadratic equations because turns out they come up a lot in life. You wouldn't think they do, but a lot of different situations are modeled this way. Uh, a great example is when you throw a ball. When you throw a ball, it doesn't just go in a line, right? It goes up, but then it comes down. That pattern of rising and falling is modeled by a quadratic equation. And so you'll have lots of times where that kind of pattern happens in life. So you'll have lots of times in your higher math classes where you have to look at quadratic equations. So these are good skills to have either way. All right, you guys, if you tracked with me, I am so proud of you. I would have turned me off a long time ago and had a cup of tea and probably whined about math to my friends, but you do great. Proud of you. Happy learning.